Hi, this is Cindy Cochran. Welcome to the podcast of my show. Remember, you can join me live every weekday morning from 10 to 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio, on Conroe's FM 106.1 and 104.5, and globally on IRLoneStar.com. And don't forget, you can download our app at your app store. If you're a big fan of my podcast, subscribe to my YouTube and SoundCloud channels. And you're always invited to my Facebook page, The Cindy Cochran Show, for the latest show info. Thank you again for listening, and now enjoy. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. We're halfway there, guys. Halfway there. And I was weird. Um, weird. You're, talk- you're listening to the Cindy Cochran Show, but there's something weirder than that that's, uh, that happened this morning. And, you know, I, I came in a little late. And uh, not late. I mean, I was here before it was 10 o'clock. But usually I try and get here about 10, 15 minutes before. But I gave in and... Richard said, so did you have to take the kids to school or something happened? Why are you you running so late? And I said, because there were cows on the road. And in Willis, Texas, and especially in Texas, that's not an unusual thing to happen, uh, really. But uh, as I went down the street, um, there they were blocking the road, in the road, and uh, there was no way to get around them. So I uh, called the farmer, we call him Farmer Steve nicest guy in the whole wide world um and he has this ranch right there at the end of end of where i live and they have longhorn longhorn cows um there's a special name for them but they're beautiful it's like you go to the zoo and you and you stand there and look at these cows these huge horns and these longhorns and this uh, typifies you know texas longhorn but um they're right down the street from us we can go see him anytime we want to, but he has a lot of different types of uh, cattle and horses. And so I try to call him to tell him they're in the road. And, uh, you know, I just want to let him know. I didn't know if he knew, knew for sure they were. But they get out once in a while. Once in a while, they wander and get through a fence or, or I, don't know how they, I don't know how they do it. He keeps the fences really well around his, uh, his land. But sometimes they get out. And one night, we hadn't lived there very long. Uh, down the street from them, and I'm, I'm asleep, and I hear this, bam, up against the wall, the the wall where the bed's up against it, and it's to the outside wall around the, around our house, um, that there's no trees or anything like that that would brush against it or hit it or whatever, and then it happened again, and it was very startling, and I thought this is ridiculous. Well, Sam doesn't go out and look. For things like this i mean it didn't i wasn't scared so i but i thought you know what would be hitting our house like that i opened the doors and went out to the back and i just put my head around it a little bit because i heard the noise again and it's two of these longhorn texas longhorns standing there eating the grass and moving their head back and forth and their horns are hitting the side of the house and it sounded like you know, the sound was you know thunderous in inside there so I had to uh, I didn't know farmer Steve at that time we just had moved in so I didn't really know him but I knew that's where they come from so I had to go down knock on the door and said excuse me your longhorn your longhorn cattle are in right behind my bedroom and they're hitting the bedroom wall and he says I am so sorry I'm so sorry let me let me uh let me go get them and so the process of them being led away and how he has to, you know, you know, it's not like he gets on a horse and goes, oh, yeah, you know, does all that stuff like you think he would. Uh, he just goes down there and hits them with a stick and makes them go. And then they follow him. Uh, he's very nonviolent. He, he told me, he says, when, you know, he has to get them going, but then they will follow him because they think it's getting ready to eat. They're getting ready to eat. And I understand that. So anyway, that's why I was late. It, you know, I I wish I could have something like that whenever I had to go to school and I was tardy or something, right down that the cows were in the road. But, um, and well, you believe that, you accept that, and that's part of it. Okay, so guys, it is Wednesday, and I just wanted to ask Richard one thing, because it is just going to be Richard and I and me. Um, Richard, did you have a good lunch yesterday? Yeah. What did you have? Jason's Deli. Yeah, Jason's yeah. Deli. That's very nice. 
Holly, his girlfriend Holly, uh, stopped, you know, took all the time to go and stop and get food and bring it to him. And that was so sweet of her to do that. So I agree. So impressed. I hope you did you give her a kiss? Thank you. No, I let her come into the door. Okay, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> don't, you know, I don't you never know what to expect from Richard. But Richard a lot of times says things that are fake news. So, he, and he tries to put up this front of being, you know, really cold, unfeeling, neglective, and all that. And he doesn't care. Just uh, ID, his IDC factor, I don't care factor, is really high. And so, um, but then he, you find out he has done some things and he's done stuff. And he says some things to, uh, to his girlfriend that are so sweet and just so loving and it's just wonderful. And I, and so he he has to serve as a great example to his nephews and, and his family on how a guy should treat a girl. Isn't that right, Richard? Yep. Okay, so I'm glad to find that out. Hey, you know who got canned? If you were wondering who got canned, and maybe you have heard this already. But we talked earlier um, about this Milo. Milo, who had... Uh, was going to speak at this university. The students protested. They even started burning up their own campus because they were protesting about him coming and speaking on their campus. So they started burning the campus. Didn't make sense. But um, he's very provocative in things that he says. He's a conservative. And like Richard had said, he's got all bases covered because he is Jewish. He's, um, he, he's conservative. And uh, he's gay. And so there's so many factors that he's just like a triple threat. He uh, he has all this going for him. And so what, what can anybody say about him? Well, he was supposed to speak at CPAC. Did you hear about this, Richard? And he was like, yeah. Well, he said he withdrew. And he said that he's uh, left Breitbart. And, and so he's, he's started saying these things that happened. So you want to find out, did they really... Were they, were they introduced to some material that said, Milo said, that he thinks in certain circumstances it should be uh, legal for a young boy to have sex or relationship with older men? That was the, that's what they found out that he said. And well, have you even listened to it? That did it. Listen to what he said? Yeah. I mean, I mean it's widely available. Oh, the tape? Yeah. No. It's a podcast. No, I just thought it, the way they, they said he discussed it made them feel like that's not the person they want at CPAC if that's what he, because that's, that's how he thinks, or he might say something like that. So so they let him go. Now, this happens to a lot of people, you know, like the president, the famous people, that he may say something and the reporter or however it comes out says, well, he what he meant was this. It's just like, um, President Trump was talking to a group of reporters and said that, you know, he wants so much to, you know, bring the country together and, and all about that America stuff and, and making America great again and all that. And he said, and we own this. We, I mean, we are the ones who built this. We built it. All of us built this together. And so we should, and whatever he went on to say, well, a reporter came out and said, She's black, and she said that President Trump said that white men built America and no one else, that they're the only ones that built America. So when confronted with what actually he, like what he said, she said, you see, that's exactly what he meant. You know, I know that's what he's saying, and he's speaking like in a code, and that's why he, you know, I know. I know that his intent was to say that it was all white people, but that's what he thinks. So... A lot of times this stuff gets you go know, like you be, you have to be confronted with the the tape and what Richard said. Did you hear what Milo said? Did I you hear the tape? I said no. So he may have said there are people that that have fought for um, older men for it to be legal for them to have sex with younger men. There's a group I can't remember what the name of the group is. Pretty disgusting. Mambla. That's right. That's right. Or Mambla. Man, I think it's man ma- boy. So yeah. Yeah. It's a real deal. Yeah. It. It is, and they uh, they have been 
lobbying for them to be able to pass a law to make it okay for them to do this. And uh, so it's just, it's so weird. I don't know. Do the, do the ones that want to have sex with animals, do they have a lobby as well? Probably. They have a group as well? Everyone has a group. Everybody has a group. Everybody lobbies. It's just it's so strange. But that was that was weird. So I, I would like to hear. I can't the believe real you haven't video. listened to it. That, that's one thing that really bothered me about the whole reporting issue of this. Because I actually listened to the podcast prior to this. Even it was a year. Oh. It was a year ago. Yeah, year and a half ago. Yeah, I, I listened to Joe Rogan's podcast, and that's what kind of started it. And then he went on another podcast to defend it. But it was interesting because that never really hit me that it was like what the media was trying to portray him as. And if anyone ever pays attention to this guy, this mm-hmm. guy is off. Like the way he talks and the stuff mm-hmm. he talks about, and like he's, he's very, he's definitely, and he'll admit it, he's a troll. And if no one knows what that <laughs> means, a troll on the internet is somebody who will just poke and try to turn your buttons to get you to admit mm-hmm. and just make that mistake. That's what he does, and he uses the fact that he's, oh, you know, a gay Jewish guy. That's what he pokes. I mean, he uses that as like. Oh yeah, he says. To me, he's done. he could do a lot better if he presented himself in a more constructive manner, but. He's not. He's just going to attack. He attacks a lot of people, and he's very controversial. But right. it's funny when they started saying all this stuff, and you listen to what he says, because he talks about from a personal experience. Because mm-hmm. he said he was basically uh, he was messed around with when he was a younger kid. Oh, when he was young, uh, that's uh-huh. his first experience, and then he, he attributes that to his discovery of him being gay. Oh. That helped him. So you discover. need to, before you talk about Cindy, you really need to listen to it. Very no. disappointed in your reporting this no, morning. Wait, wait, fake news, Cindy Cochran. Show. Did you not listen? You didn't listen to me because what I was doing was showing what they had done to him, and then what they the same thing they did to Trump is that you need to listen to the actual audio of it. If you have it there, we can play it. But it's 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 how the stuff gets started. But to have a reporter confess that the way they reported it was what the reporter thought they were trying to say and that that was the that was their case and why it was justified because she knew what he was trying to say that's what now and i certainly agree i think everybody needs to listen to the tape but i don't know who listened to the tape at cpac that made them so nervous well you know it's funny i have i have this theory that when something like this and this is what really bothers me about the media and how they decide to go as a group to publish these articles because this has been available for over a year and it's public like what these podcasts Uh, these things that he said this isn't something that he wrote in a memo that was taken by fishing from podesta Uh and some type of controversial from wikileaks like this is something that somebody listened to is similar to the pewdiepie thing i was telling you it's Mm -hmm. it's about how the media interprets these things right right and no one called him out for a year and a half about these things especially if they're trying to claim that he is are these horrible things and, and that to me that's just kind of a hit job almost sure and there's definitely a conversation about how are we going to take this guy down and when he I, my my theory is when he got so much national attention and he's being invited to talk on these things, like mm-hmm. you know, CPAC and stuff. Right. So, like you know, a group of ten people were like, "We need to put, we need to release this stuff, even though it might not be technically true." Right. It's just him, and I and I encourage everyone to really, and this is something that everyone needs to take the time to do, is when someone makes these kind of claims, look into it, mm-hmm. because it's it's sometimes, if it was real, yeah, then they'd be, he'd be arrested, and it would be like a real bona fide investigation. But this is the news just using Why would those, he be arrested? Well, if he had claims that he was doing – he was a pedophile. No. No, what I what I understood was he was he was just uh, – it sounded like yeah. he was supporting that if, uh, if in some cases it should be allowed and be legal for older men to have sex with younger boys. That's what came out from the CPAC thing. So – that's, I didn't well, know see, what again, he said to make. Yeah, you need to listen no, to what he said, right? Because he didn't, didn't say it should be legal. He never said anything like that. Well, that's what the press said. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Anyway, yeah. he he basically says the law as it is is good law today. Mm-hmm. But he talked about his personal experience being young and being confused. Like this is something that's normal in the gay community. Mm-hmm. Because gay in the gay commu- community, when you're 13, 14, you don't have other 13, 14 year old boys around you because no one really knows if you're gay or not at 13 14 that's very rare 
right to know that but if you do know that most he says both both people in the community learn from older men so he said so Does that makes sense i understand that but is that what his justification was for saying that yeah, maybe he, the law he should look at it he, and i again if you're pg-13 person don't read more into this because he gets very graphic with it but he basically says that if he didn't have that experience then he wouldn't be who he is today Mm -hmm. on a sexuality Hmm. interesting but i i i I totally agree about making sure what they said because i know how rotten it's reported but usually the press is so you know on the side of here, let me help you out on this. Here's what you need. Well, you know, it's funny. Say. I had a conversation with my buddies this weekend, and one of them complained that what they wish is whenever they make a retraction or an edit or anything, they put it at the top it's of not... the, the top of the, of, right. of the deal because it's like, how do you know? It's and buried. It's just the hit job happens, and then you know, two weeks later, oh, hey, by the way, we were wrong. And and here's what the newspaper news know, news organizations know. Give you two weeks. You forget about it. You forget about it and you go on. And that's what I'm saying. Like now it's so much shorter. You're listening to Cindy's Cindy's Cochran Show. The Cindy Cochran Show, where it's real reality radio. We'll be right back. Don't you go away. Just a couple of minutes. The Cindy Cochran Show. The first daily talk show serving Montgomery County. This is Cindy Cochran, and I just wanted to thank you for listening. I know your ears will thank you for the experience. And don't forget to listen live when you can, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. The Cindy Cochran Show, Real Reality Radio. The Cindy Cochran Show, you ain't heard nothing yet. Hello. <laughs> Hello, you're listening to the Cindy Cochran Show. Thank you so much for being here. We were trying to finish up that conversation about Milo, but when we get into a break, it usually gets more, you know, in fact, we should have uh, not had the break and just kept talking because it is, uh, it gets so intense. I don't believe that, uh, you know, from his perspective and what Richard was just explaining as you were talking about is that, He was talking about the laws that condemn someone for having sex with a younger person and calling them, you know, calling them pedophiles and all that, Uh, that he was he was questioning that. So it wasn't, you know, so it it may have come off that he was advocating it. Maybe he was. Just look, read, listen to what he says. It's not hard to find. Yeah. It's good. Just Google Google Milo. Yeah. Namo lips. No one knows how to pronounce his last name. Hey. Guess what's coming up? This is a much more fun topic. Um, taxes. If uh, Have you already done your taxes? Or you started doing it yet? You've already done it? Yeah. Oh, my sister would love you. You've, you've done it already. Well, there's a guy named Ed Hindeman that MSN Money is uh, reporting about that uh, works as an independent contractor for several non- nonprofit organizations and lives in Brooklyn. He hasn't paid federal income tax since 1970. Now, he does pay Social Security, Medicare, state, and local taxes, but he refuses to pay federal income tax every year because he opposes all war and spending on the U.S. military. He says there's a lot of talk about people protesting because of Trump's border wall, he said. That pales in comparison to how much they spend in the military, military spending. Hedeman, Hedeman, Hedeman is 72 years old. He still files tax returns every year, and he doesn't falsify any information on them. He said, but he still had plenty of legal problems as a, res- as a result. With his tax returns, he includes a letter explaining that he does not want any of his taxes to be spent on war or the military. He then takes the money that would have been allocated to the federal government and donates it to organizations he cares about, which have included Planned Parenthood, non-government funded schools, refugee aid groups, and Parkinson's disease research. In total, he estimates he don- he's donated $85,000, the amount he would have sent to the federal government. Hindman isn't alone in his refusal to pay federal income tax. There are entire organizations dedicated to providing information to those who don't want to pay, including the organization of which Hindeman is a founder, 
the National War Tax Resistance Coordinating Committee. It's difficult to determine how many people decide not to pay federal taxes as a form of protest and how many IRS fines for that. Hindeman says the National War Tax Resistance Coordinating Committee estimates there are several thousand each year who refuse to pay some or all the federal income taxes. Now, the number has varied over the years, as likely as its peak during the early 70s. An estimated 20,000 refused at least some of their income tax, and 500,000 refused their telephone taxes. He said Hindeman predicts the number will grow this year and in the next several years. But it's way too early to tell. This is hilarious. I, I can't believe this person had been put in jail. Why haven't they put it, been put in jail if they've gone that long? Um, now, he's gone to court, apparently, and he said it's been expensive, but his refusal. But I just I can't imagine being the IRS agent that opens up the, the letter and reads this letter and said, and, and he gives all the reasons why. He's, and just like it says, he's not falsifying. He's not hiding. He's not trying to keep this from anybody. This is just a protest. And could our religious belief, being opposed to war, ever become a factor for not having to pay federal income tax because you do not believe where the money is going uh, is for the right reason? Unless the IRS said, okay, fine. Then let's see what the percentage of what you're going to be paying for federal income tax is military. And then we'll deduct that from there. I, I don't know. But I'm just saying, if someone religiously objects to this and it's that kind of um, objection, they let people off for everything else. So I just wonder how that would uh, how that play out. I think that my sister is a CPA and I'm, I'm very interested in talking to her and finding out if somebody's gone that long because she gets all over me if I don't have the receipts and I don't have the information in. And she's, you know, very, um, very strictly I'll go along the lines of when things are supposed to begin, what you pay for, and, and all that. So I know people have complained a lot for having to pay school tax when they don't have any children that go to school and all. But that has been, I think there was a good argument for that when they were talking about don't you want to live in a community where the children have the best education they can have they grow up and be uh, you know they do good things for the community they're intelligent they're you know they're educated to where they will take care of the community you live in as they grow up because of their fine education and you helped uh, make that happen because when they come back into the community with their education they're going to help you so this is, you know, in first your your turn to help them as they are on their education way. Well, that's, you know, that's an argument for everybody having to pay in. Everybody pays in because everybody's going to benefit from it. But if you feel like you being protected from other countries coming in and bombing and, you know, and having their way with us is uh, not worth paying your taxes to help keep the military up. Now... I certainly, boy, do I have a full, you know, support of people who say, here's the deal. When we find out that they're paying $500,000 for a tire for a Jeep and, and, and that's our tax dollars going to that, there's something wrong there. So I understand that complaint. And this guy is 72 years old. I think when you get this weird, after Sam, my husband, past 70 he became that person we used to laugh at about how everything in the government's wrong everything the government does is wrong and 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 just nitpicks at everything and we used to think man they need more to do they just you know all they want to do is that grumpy old men came from uh this kind of stigma that we have as being older and luckily i haven't hit that yet but i certainly understand it and i certainly feel that about a lot of a lot of things when i finally found out. I mean, I didn't care growing up 30s, 40s. I never made paying any attention to how much the military would spend for something that was way over, you know, way over cost that we would spend on things. It's just stupid. And we're paying for this. We want the best deal possible. I think that's what's very attractive about Trump was 
he brought those things out and now he's got Boeing and, you know, all those guys lucky to, uh, competing and trying to outbid or underbid each other. But that was good. We wanted somebody to like, listen, to, listen to how much money we're spending and wasting. Come on, let's, let's, uh, let's save some money here and give it back to the taxpayers. That would be awesome. So anyway, uh, there's a lot of tax reform going on. And like I talked about earlier, Kevin Brady's a part of that. And I can't wait to, for that to come down. We've got to get him on this show because he owes it to us here. We are his constituents. So we need to try and get him uh, on here and explain how cool this postcard type of tax return uh, might be coming our way in the future. Okay, guys, you're listening to the Cindy Cochran Show, and we will be right back. Don't go away. It's so gorgeous outside, but don't go away. The Cindy Cochran Show. You ain't heard nothing yet. Hey, this is Cindy. Just wanted to thank you personally for listening. Remember, live is even more fun, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. And if you or someone you know would like to sponsor The Cindy Cochran Show, please message me on my Facebook page, The Cindy Cochran Show. The Cindy Cochran Show, the most opinionated talk show on radio. And we're back on The Cindy Cochran Show. Okay, so now we've uh, we've done the taxes and uh, how somebody hasn't paid taxes for 70 years and uh, why he's not in jail, I don't know, but he has uh, uh, he has some religious reasons, some spiritual reasons and all that. And does that get you out of it? So anyway, that's on MSN uh, news um, segment on the internet, msn.com. If you want to... Uh, read that and they have a a lot of times when they do an article like that then they'll have articles that uh will will be like that you can see what other people have uh, been through and done if you're interested in that but i want to tell you on the 25th we're having a parade is that correct is that still going to happen the the 25th we're going to have a parade we're going to ride on a parade yeah i've been trying to email you about and what you agreed to to come so i was trying to coordinate everybody yeah am i supposed to bring it's at one o'clock oh okay it's one o'clock you yourself are in the float so you need to be here between 11 30 and 12 30 and i'm gonna get this is it standing or you sit or you you need a i you know cindy oh that was in the email as well that was about four or five days ago so i hate to ask questions should have known yeah Oh. So, but if you want to be a spectator, yeah, come downtown Conroe. Tune into 104.5, 106.1 if you can't make it because we're going to do on the air float uh, broadcast. So we're going to be on the float, on broadcasting. The float broadcasting, and then Monica's going to be in the studio broadcasting the music and stuff. Oh. And then uh, the float, the whole thing starts at one. It's to support the Houston Livestock and Rodeo. It kicks it off. If no one knows the history of this parade, uh, it's the first parade that kicks off the Houston Livestock and Rodeo. In mm-hmm. Houston, and so it's the uh, there's gonna be a lot of people. It's like an hour and a half long, and you just wow. hang out in downtown Conroe, watch all the floats. It's gonna be fun. And sit in front of the IR Lone Star, uh, yeah, studio, and you can look through the windows and see what's going on. But you also can sit there and enjoy uh, commentating. Will there be uh, information to commentate uh, to <laughs> commentate to uh, talk about what's going on, what the is on the floats as they go by? Who's go- is it going to be live? I really wish you'd read your emails. <laughs> I'm interviewing you. It, I don't want to act like I know it all. It's, I'm interviewing oh, really? you. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Richard. Um, no, I just I want you to explain to the public. Yeah, it's just a parade right? that features all local people, different companies, different nonprofits, different government agencies. It's a parade, Cindy, and they're gonna they're gonna have a huge event. It's gonna be fun. Just come hang out with your kids. Go to Conroe Coffee, get some food, get some coffee, get some ice cream. Okay, how large is this float? It, we have a truck. It's so you're gonna be in a truck. Yeah, you're gonna be in inside the... of a truck waving to people. You're not gonna be on the air. Uh, okay, if you read the email, I'm um, I'm asking for safety's sake. Am, am I? Are, you're are inside sitting? of a truck. Inside of a truck, and you're, you're just sitting, waving. Yeah, with the window rolled down. So I have to lean over the person driving and wave at that side and then lean over? If you over. want to do that. Okay. I mean, I'm, you're... Ho- I'd just like to know yeah, exactly. Hopefully you're going to be Mark with Mark and Kay inside and Rick and Meredith are going to be in the bed. Okay. Doing the broadcast. Okay. Because they're okay. DJs. They actually know what they're doing. Shut up, Richard. Uh, so 
so we're inside. The old people are inside. Glad we're having this official discussion. Yeah, this is good because this way you won't yell at me in front of everybody. Uh -huh. uh, no, I, I was just, I wanted to tell everybody about this parade and what uh, was going to happen. And you know more than anybody because you're part of the planning thing. So I thought it would be good to have you describe what's going on and not me for crying out loud. But I was curious about the physicality part of the parade and the float. Do we stand? Do we sit? Are we waving? Do we have poles that we're connected to so we don't fall off the truck, uh, the the float? Uh, what's going to be the what will be wrapped around the float? What kind of information are you going to have on the float? We're just going to have we're going to have flyers and things like that. We have some banners. Okay, okay. Do I get to put my banner on it? No. Oh, okay. I was just wondering. I was just wondering. So yeah, just... we're actually taking your banner down. <gasps> what? And replacing our banner with it. What? Yeah. Why? You had a good run, Cindy. That you can't do that. Nobody will see it on the front of my house. So, okay. Um, are you really taking it down? Yeah, I want to replace it with Lone Star's banner. Why well, can't it be at the top? No, it's going to be taken down. Just because you don't read your emails. That's exactly why I'm doing it. Oh, Teach I'm being you punished. Lesson. You're being punished. You need to read your emails. Oh. Okay. Well, you've got to write. Now that you're writing more fun emails, I'll read them. But um, anyway, so that's going to be on the 25th. And you guys, everybody's welcome. And all of our listeners that are outside of Montgomery County, come on down. Y'all fly down. It'll be great. It'll be absolutely great. And I think that because uh, the last time I was at a pra parade, we were doing live on the street type com you know, commentary. So I didn't know if you wanted me to do something like that. But if it's just waving, sitting and waving. Again. Okay, okay. I Read was just, email. I was just saying, if you wanted that, that would have been fun too. Well, I would have liked to know that if you responded to the first email asking about being in the <laughs> parade. Who's interested? Mark asked, had to ask me. You and... again, check your email. So to give people a timeline of how bad she is about checking her email, I sent an email out <laughs> to everyone who's involved with the studio, and she sends me a text saying, "Mark asked me about the parade. Am I invited?" Yeah. Thinking I didn't invite Cindy Cochran. I was and I was like, so... well, did you check your email? Oh, that's what that is? Yes. Okay. And what's funny is she didn't even respond to it, even after I told her about it. I take back everything I said in the beginning. When I was you should have. So I'm going to punish you until you realize you need to watch what you say. Fake news, Cindy Cochran show. <laughs> Shut up, Richard. Man, you are being so... I bet, you know... Parents out there, they have the kids there, and they don't allow them to say the S word. Shut up. And um, I'm sorry. I apologize. But it, it probably is most warranted and the best way to use it here. Other than on Tommy Boy. we got to get that clip from Tommy Boy someday. Shut up, Richard. But um, anyway, that's happening in, uh, in downtown Conroe. And I hope you come here and see how we're just kidding because Richard and I really do get along. You know, I love Richard and I know Richard loves me. I know that he uh, he doesn't mean half of the things he says. Yeah, right. Okay. Also, a lot of stuff is going to be happening this weekend. I realized that uh, besides the parade, if, uh, if you were planning on going to the uh, Love and Respect seminar that uh, – about five of the churches around here in Conroe area are coming together, and they're not the same. You know, it's not the same last name of the church. Uh, they're different, different denominations that are coming together, and they're going to put this on and try and help uh, raise the uh, the level of you know the love and respect of marriages around here. And everybody is invited, even if you're you know if you haven't gotten married yet, you want to uh, come and. Find the tools on how to, you know, argue and how to uh, uh, gain the respect of your spouse and how to give respect to your spouse. That's the most important thing. So I'm, uh, I'm hoping everybody will take, uh, take part in that. And that is uh, ConroeChurchOfChrist.org. Uh, we'll get you to where ever other and show you where all the other churches are that are uh, involved in this, and be a part of that. And then walk, you know, start Monday off with a brand new uh, marriage because it'll be so full and so sweet. Everybody will be happy. And then, of course, there is um, the 
Inspire Film Fest that's going to be this weekend. The Inspire Film Fest is going on, and we are going to give away two pair of tickets uh, that are, you know, like top of the line that you can see all the movies in the film fest. This is the very first film fest uh, of uh, for the Woodlands, and they're really excited about it. And Cinemark and Market marketplace where cinemark is tinseltown where you know where that is all everybody around here understands that they're just right next to each other but that's where the uh, films are going to be shown and then the last grand finale uh the films the winners and all that will be shown at the uh, the methodist church we call it the gold dome here it's a gorgeous amazing church and they have just the right auditorium to uh, fill and screens and all that are even larger than any of the theaters around here but they are good they're good so if you guys want to um, have something to do here's something to do and you may get you know free tickets and this is all you have to this is how you're so easy to to win these tickets if you live around this area so that you can utilize them come by and pick them up this is it if you will name yeah, give a title to a documentary about me and about Cindy and uh, my uh, my life. If you've listened to the radio for a while and you've known so more than you ever wanted to know about me, and and uh, so anyway, the deal is if you can title my documentary that I would do if I was going to submit something to the film fest, and who's ever comes up that's the closest, the most cleverest, cleverest, no, clever, and uh, that will. Uh, you know, epitomize what I'm all about. So that's what I'm what I'm looking for on my Facebook page. And you have to go to the Cindy Cochran, Cindy Cochran, C-O-C-H-R-A-N, uh, Facebook, and uh, submit. And go to messages and then submit your, you know, what title you would have. So I, that would be be so great if you would do that because we would have so much fun. We're going to have so much fun. Um, we have some in the works, and so we'll see what who's going to come up with the best one. But anyway, it's a cool, it's a very cool offer that they gave us these uh, two pairs of uh, tickets, and then we know how much they're worth, and so it's really a big, good, good, good deal. So guys, uh, go to my Facebook page, look it up, and do it. All right, guys, uh, we'll be right back. Don't go away. It's our going into our last segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Cindy Cochran Show. The Cindy Cochran Show. Real Reality Radio. Remember, live is better. And if you can, join me Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. and interact live on the show through my Facebook page. Let's get your morning started. The Cindy Cochran Show. The first daily talk show serving Montgomery County. And you're back on the Cindy Cochran Show. I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to get into the story, but it's so interesting because um, it relates to the uh, first thing I told you all about, about having the cows in the street. And that's why I was late because I couldn't, I had to get the cows moved away so we could get through. But um, I, I saw this article of, that's um, about North Texas, and they're announcing a feral and feral hog, F-E-R-A-L, hog a couple, apocalypse, uh, is in with, within reach in Texas. Agriculture Commissioner Sid Miller has approved of the first pesticide targeting wild pigs. Now, we have those in our back in our forest. They come out and feed on our corn, corn feeder for the deer. We have a lot of deer in the back as well. But these, we didn't know hogs were there until we put a, a camera on the tree and was just we were thought we were going to watch the deer come loping in and eat the corn well it wasn't there was these you know the camera opens up and there's these hogs these big old hogs that are eating the stuff and and it's just scary because as it's like maybe 300 feet from our back porches but uh so anyway they're announcing that there's going to be a feral hog apocalypse they believe within the uh, within reach here in Texas, and that they're going to use pesticide. 
And Miller has said, he said this in the article, that they will use the pesticide Kaput Feral Hog Lure. That's only a Texas name, Kaput Feral Hog Lure, as bait food laced with, oh, warfarin, warfarin. Wait a minute. I thought that's what I took for, <laughs> I thought that's what I took in the hospital. Wait a minute. What is that? Uh, which was the same drug used to kill rats. What? What was that? That is so close to the name of the uh, uh, antibiotic I was taking in the hospital. Oh, my word. I'm going to have to go look that up. But anyway, it's um, it's the same drug that you use to kill rats. They're going to lace the uh, kaput feral hog lore as bait food and uh, kill off the hogs. Because when they get to be this bad, then the you know Texas agriculture gives permission to hunters to come in and and hunt them down like rats and kill them. But the move has upset hunters who gathered more than 1,200 signatures in opposition within two days. Now, that's what I was wondering because here's the deal. If you're going to poison them, then they don't get a chance to go out and hunt them, and they can use them for food and all that stuff. Uh, so he says, we, this hunter says, we don't think this is the poison is the way to go. Um, because they have an association called the Texas Hog Hunters Association. He refers he prefers hunting and trapping methods to control the invasive invasive species. Hansen has been hunting hogs since he was 16 years old, and it's a way to feed the family. So uh, they don't want them using this poison, rat poison, to kill them. So this is going to be fun to see how this plays out, because usually hunters associations. Uh, a lot of power and they can i would think be able to to say let us try our way first you know give us permission to kill them give us permission to uh, to hunt them down and all that stuff and then we're good we're good with that so anyway um uh, that's we'll we'll look at that and keep you updated because if you're not in texas and don't know about these kind of things then it doesn't mean uh, a flip to you but it is important because maybe we need to be going out in the backyard and and uh, getting rid of the hogs because they've become they're multiplying too fast. So I got to tell Sam about this. He'll be so excited. He'll set up a, a hog stand and uh, <laughs> and maybe we can start training the puppies to be uh, hunter dogs and it'll be great fun. But we do, we do have a deer stand in the back. And I said, you're not going to kill a deer from that deer stand, right? In the trees. And he says, no, it's just there for us to you know sit up there and watch them come in and they won't know we're there. And we can take pictures of them. And I went, okay, well, that's nice. That's sweet. We can do that. No problem. It's just that I don't want you killing them. The first time my youngest grandson comes over, he says, come on, Cash, we're going to go out. And we're going to hunt some deer. And we're going to set up the deer. And I said, you better not. Just better not do that. So I have to watch them. So they don't be dragging deer out of the back of the forest. But maybe hogs will be okay. So, see, those are the kind of things you run into, but you're probably not running into that there in uh, Connecticut or uh, Michigan or someplace like that. But we have so much fun here in Texas. Uh, listen, we there's only one more subject matter that I wanted to get, get to today and didn't have time, so we'll have to hold it over uh, to talk about. And it's about the celebrities that have made a video about uh, states that are not agreeing to and submitting to the um, the restroom thing where, you know, depending on what sex you you are uh, feeling that you really are and you're not physically that you want to have a restroom to be able to go into. So um, Texas is getting, uh, starting to get a lot of attention and they're starting to get a lot of, uh, you know, backlash from from our stance on it and that we've told the government keep your money if that's if you're going to try and uh say to us we uh we won't give you money if you continue to do this way well the government's changed now and so we don't know how that's going to all iron out but the uh, obama government when he put that into to play said listen you guys are not going to get your money if you keep this up texas said keep it keep your money because we're not going to we're not going to adhere to that we will take care of people that need to have their own restroom, but uh, we're not going to mandate stuff. So forget about it. So anyway, we're uh, we're we're watching that. So Greg Abbott and um, even you know Dan Patrick have been on the news about all that. That's exciting. So to to have our our voice heard. Yes, we are having our voice heard. 
Uh, listen, guys, speaking of having your voice heard, uh, this is the Cindy Cochran Show. I'm here every morning, 10 to 11, and uh, you're so invited to come in. And if you want to join in the conversation, you go to my Facebook, go to Messages, click on that, and uh, give me your opinion, your, you know, what you think. If you think I'm crazy or why or why there's a better way, so, I certainly we'll read it and we'll, uh, we'll talk about you in a good way, only in a good way. Okay, listen, you know what? I just found out, Richard, that, that reading your email is profitable. I just, someone just found me that I haven't seen or heard from in years. I mean, 20 years, and they found me. And so um, I have to see how, long, how old this email is and, uh, and respond back. And it's so exciting. So uh, you're right, Richard. You're right. And you'll only hear you say that once, once in a while. Okay, everybody, uh-oh, uh-oh, go ahead. You take a breath. You're getting ready to say something. Go ahead. You say that every day. Say what? I, I say that every day? You should. I should say, will that help? You're right. Okay, okay. That'll help you you're stay right. off my back. Okay. All right, you're right. Richard, you're right. Richard the right. Richard is right, and uh, I'm even more right because I'm Cindy Cochran, and this is Cindy Cochran Show. Fake news. Shut up, Richard. <laughs> Okay, guys, we'll see you tomorrow, and have a great day. It's so beautiful outside, and Hanging with the Haters comes on at 12. Thanks for checking out this production on Old Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's radio station. For more information on this show and other shows on Lone Star, check us out online at IRLoneStar.com. If you're interested in sponsoring a program on Lone Star Community Radio and reaching the local audience of Montgomery County on FM, Internet, and TV media, please call 936-647-5747 or contact us online at IRLoneStar.com. This recording is a Lone Star Community Radio production produced by the show host and Dick Schistler of Lone Star Community Radio. Interested in volunteering as a music DJ? Starting your own talk show? Yeah. Contact Dick Schistler at dick at irlonestar.com or by phone at 936-647-5747.